Okay, hello there, hello there, everybody, and uh, a very warm welcome to our podcast on the highly relevant and very interesting topic of DEI, which is short for diversity, uh, equity, and inclusion. Um, um, a, f a little while, uh, a few uh, months ago, you have actually decided to set up an advisory group uh, on uh, addressing the issue of anti-discrimination and equal treatment in the European health and fitness sector. Um, and we define some uh, key concepts that we would like experts and representatives of our sector to help us um, um, substantiate and, and have a meaningful conversation around in order to make sure that we improve uh, anti-discrimination and uh, equal treatment in our sector. We define the key concepts of di dignity, equality, tolerance, meritocracy and anti-discrimination as five, uh, the five key concepts that we would like our experts and representatives in our DEI advisory group to, uh, to help us define and, and, um, and uh, have a meaningful uh, conversation around how we can improve our sector in this regard. And of course, this is directly linked to our uh, Horizon 2025 manifesto and um, the four headlines that I guess you all know by this point, health, digital, community and standards. And, Specifically, the issue of DEI and anti-discrimination and equal treatment relates to the headline of community and how we interact as a sector with uh, the communities around us um, and uh, how we act as active citizens, as good citizens taking responsibility, not only specifically for our sector, but also um, how we build trust and confidence in our sector by taking responsibility for society at large. And, um, and in order to, uh, to address address uh, this matter. Uh, today we have uh, invited Rachel Young and Tony Stone, uh, two of our representatives uh, being part of our uh, DEI advisory group at Eurobactive to, uh, to join us and to speak about um, this important topic. Um, so without further ado, I'd like to hand over to Rachel uh, for a short introduction. Um, if you would en enlighten us a bit on your, about your, your background and your approach to the subject, and then um, we'll hear from um, Tony immediately after. Thanks very much. Perfect. Thanks, Andreas. Thank you for having me. I'm very proud to be part of this. So normally in an introduction, it's kind of people talk about what they do rather than who they are. Um, what I do is I'm in, the, I'm in the fitness industry. I've been in the fitness industry for over 30 years, kind of sales and operations perspective. I eat, sleep and breathe fitness. And my passion about that is all from a people perspective. But who, who am I? I'm Rachel Young. I'm 48 years old. I'm gay. I'm married and I've recently started to talk quite openly about my experiences of being gay in the fitness industry and it's time for us to kind of be more open, more tolerant, more accepting and talk about these things and I hope that I'm able to contribute and bring value to this group. Perfect, thanks so much Rachel. Tony? Hi everybody, I'm Tony Stone. I am a dance choreographer from Los Angeles, California. I've had the, uh, the pleasure to be able to live in different uh, countries throughout Europe. Uh, once I uh, moved from Los Angeles to the EU, I've lived in Spain, Germany, uh, let's see, Italy. I'm now in Portugal. So um, I've been able to really embrace the, the, uh, the European experience. And um, I've made the transition from being strictly dance into the fitness industry as a dance fitness uh, presenter and instructor uh, worldwide. And um, yeah, so that's what I do. And like Rachel said, who I am is a, an American black man that uh, you know deals with all the trials and tribulations of not just in my own country of the US, but all over the world of uh, you know discrimination, automatic um, um, getting to a point of, you know, that must be what he does from even simple things like being on an airplane and people walking up to me and going, uh, what do you do? Are you a DJ? So it's, you know, and that's why this has brought me to the forefront of this and making sure that everyone's realizing, you know what, it's time. It's time that this gets much better. This recognition goes beyond, and you'll know, talk to talk to walk to walk. So again, Andreas, thank you for having me. And thanks for, and I'm really proud and honored to be on board. Thanks so much. Uh, thanks so much, Tony and Rachel. Um, and we are extremely honored that you um, have to, accepted to be part of our uh, advisory group, which is an official uh, advisory group uh, of Europe Actives, um, together with our other um, industry representative bodies. So 
we're really looking forward to um, to working on this topic with you guys over the coming months. We have a concrete task in terms of defining a sectoral charter underneath our community headline of our manifesto. We would like to present a, a, a charter to our industry addressing the issue of DEI and how we can improve as a sector around the four concepts that um, I briefly presented before. Um, and again, just to repeat the, the, the basic uh, concepts of the DEI draft charter that is that our advisory group is, um, is working on right now is dignity, equality, tolerance, meritocracy, and uh, anti-discrimination. And um, Tony and Rachel, um, just uh, to, to open the conversation, the concept of, of dignity, we've spoken a lot about that in, in, our, uh, in our advisory group. The concept of dignity and treating everybody, every person that you meet with dignity. What does that? Could you could you expand upon that a little bit? What 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 does that mean in a meaningful way in order to sort of um, make it daily practice in our industry? So of course it's a very it's it's the it is it's taken directly from the first article of the 1948 Human Rights Universal Human Rights Declaration. And every human being has a right to be treated with dignity, um, equally in dignity. And um, of course, by, a lot of people will say that they, you know, uh, treat everybody that they meet in their way with dignity. But of course, based on some of the the um, things we've heard in the advisory group, some of the experiences that people have had, and and of course, uh, some of the uh, issues that are taking place around us with regards to Black Lives Matter, um, Me Too, and so on, we can. It's a fact that people aren't, in fact, being treated with uh, uh, equal respect and, and dignity. So how can we how can we improve that in our sector? How do we create those norms? Um, how do we actually get that? Great. You want to go ahead and jump in first? Rachel? OK. Uh -oh, totally. just frozen. Um, yeah, you know, well, the biggest thing uh, for, for me is, yeah, it, it's it's a lot of people saying, yeah, this is the way, you know, um, um, it should, someone should be treated. There is a way that, that someone should be viewed. It, I, I should act this way. Um, we all should be this way. Um, and that's one thing. And it's, it's, it's great that people are at least, you know, chiming, you know, those songs. But the thing is, is that you've got to be able to, do, you know, do the choreography behind the song. Don't just be about, uh, saying what it should be, if you see something that's literally right in front of you, that's literally undignified, don't just let it just walk by. Don't just let it pass by you. Be the one that stands up and says, hey, you know, that, that kind of attitude, that kind of, um, of action, that's not tolerated here. That's not right. I see it. You see it. You know it. I know it. And I'm going to call you out on it. And it's got to be a much more... Um, involved more even because that involvement will ensure evolve the the involvement so um it, it's it's when you see someone that's acting in an undignified manner be the one to call it out don't let it go by anymore silence is deadly as we've now uh, uh come to realize that silence is is basically saying, okay, you know what, it's okay. And it's not okay anymore. Thanks, Tony. I think we have Rachel back on board with us. Rachel, do you yeah, want to um, dignity? Yeah, I'm sorry, you lost me. It's a, it's, a, it's a key foundation for us, dignity. Dignity is about the fair and equal treatment of, of, a, of each other and us as people with a people business. And we talk about building a culture and the perception is we have a great culture across the fitness industry and the reality is we don't please understand i, I don't come from a you know a finger pointing um, attitude or approach to this um this is the reality of what's going on um, and what's happened in the past that we need to learn from and adapt and make some changes so that we are all inclusive and we do build these firm foundations based on dignity Thanks so much. I, I think, um, as we spoke about in the advisory group, I think dignity is the most important concept in, in this regard. It's, it's mm -hmm. really for good reason that the Human Rights Declaration rests upon this concept of dignity as a norm that needs to underpin 
uh, our equal treatment of, of everybody and, and, and our anti-discrimination initiatives because it's really how we meet each other as, uh, as human beings. Um, and, um, and, and as we see sometimes um, in the public debate, it is so easy. That there's an old idea in philosophy that yesterday's um, oppressed can become tomorrow's oppressors. Mm. If they don't, if they don't recognize the human being in each and every person that they meet, it's so easy to become, to use the logic of the oppressor, um, you know, when, when, when you get on top, right? And, and I would really like to hear your thoughts on that, Tony, because we had the conversation about MLK and, and, uh, and Malcolm X last time, right? And I've, I've been very touched and inspired by that conversation, that debate between them, because ML, MLK, of course, in, in very brief terms, he, he argued in favor of universalism, that he had this ideal um, vision of little black kids and little white kids should play together and walk hand in hand to school and so on. That was his vision. Whereas uh, Malcolm X, he sort of concluded that that is not possible. We need to accept the, a sectarian world where people do not live, share communities, but live in communities side by side. And that's, of course, two very different visions of the world. And when I listen to the public debate around um, Me Too and Black Lives Matter and other, other similar debates, it seems that our, you know, a lot of people have capitulated right on the universalist approach and they're moving you know, down the track of Malcolm X, which I think is is very sad, because you you um, you spoke about a, 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 an episode you had with the police officer that was very I think it moved all of us very much and 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 touched our sense of of, of justice and perhaps you will explain the situation afterwards. But but I think obviously in that situation you could say that that the police officer is. Uh, is, is representative of a, of a discriminatory system as such. Or you could say that he has not understood the very premise of modern society, that every person must be treated equally, right? So I think the question is, do we give that police officer who, who acted as a, to be, to be straightforward as an, as an idiot, you know, do we give him the right to define what society should be about? Or should we say that he's the, the um, he has not understood what it's all about in, do you see what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, something that I wanted to touch on as far as, uh, before I go on to that, as far as dignity is concerned. Dignity is literally, it walks hand in hand with your conscience, okay? And as a result of that, um, that conscience should be willing to, because in once that, that comes to the forefront, you have to, there has to be recognition, there has to be admission. And with those things coming to the forefront, are those easy things to, 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 to handle? Absolutely not, especially in something that's gone on for decades, for decades and centuries between inequality you know, and discrimination. It's been going on for decades and to come to the, to, to, the, to the table and go, you know what, that's me, my bad. I gotta take that on. It's, it, it's not as, we, we get it. It's not nearly as easy as it is gonna be able to say those words. Now, as far as like uh, the, the, that conversation that we had, yeah, uh, you know, with this police officer that, that pulled me out of my car for, I mean, I'll, I'll try to, you know, keep the story a, a little bit more condensed, pulled me out of my car for absolutely really no, re, you know, no reason, handcuffed me, threw me. I've got a perfect record. I've never been arrested. I barely even have a, a, a moving violation handcuffed, thrown into the, to the gutter, water running down my face. You know, it, it, um, um, another thing that a, a lot of people don't realize about our policing system in, in, in the, within the U.S. is how it started. And as a, I'm not saying, we're, and no one is, is crazy enough to say, well, it started that way and that is the way it is now. But it does have to do with a basic rounding of mentality, okay? And the way that our policing started Policing started to make sure to catch slaves to get them back to their owners. That's what policing was about in America when it started for the longest time. So, uh, and that's where we're coming to the point where it's like, okay, are we not really understanding the inequalities here? Are we not seeing the, 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 the outrageous percentage numbers compared to one or the other? We have to do, we have to do better. We have to do better, and we can. Um, as far as uh, uh, MLK is concerned, yes, my 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 belief is to try to handle this as peacefully 
and universally as possible. But like I said um, in that example, when you're constantly barraged with this, you're not, you're, th it was in our constitution, uh, not in our constitution, it was in our, uh, part of our, our, our rights uh, uh, back in the day that it was like, blacks will never be seen more than three fifths of a person. You know, when, when, when that kind of stuff is on a constant and, and, and still to this day with redlining and, and you can't get a loan if you live in this area. I mean, you get to a point, and I, I have mentioned this before, it would be very, very simple for me to, to switch over to the Malcolm X more like, you know what, you do you, I'm going to do me, where we meet in the middle could be violent and that's the way it's going to be. Um, it could end up very well. I could have been that way. I could have been that militant. My education is what saved me. Trying to trying to come at it from a much more educated, much more MLK. Let's we can do this. Trying to believe in the better part of humanity. So what Tony's just said, and the better part of humanity is is such a key point, and is following that up with education is is that's where it all comes from. You know, um, I'm going to hold my hands up and say that I am part of the inherent problem that exists because I've not spoken out um, because I've kept quiet and I've almost um, towed the line. You know, I would see um, situations, you know, even maybe a, a situation such as yours, Tony, or something more relevant you know, to me. I've been in bad situations where I have kept my mouth shut and I've not said anything and I've watched behaviors that are not acceptable then gone away and talked about how unacceptable those behaviors are and made a little decision in my own little world to stay away from that environment. Rachel, that's not good enough. Anyone that doesn't, who, if you see something, you act, you speak out and you, you take it on. And that's my approach to this and that's what we need to do. But we need to encourage people to do that and we encourage them to do that through education because I think big thing that I've seen is that there's a palpable appetite for change here but there's also a palpable level of, of fear of making mistake and getting it wrong and making it worse mm. so we need to make sure it's you know i make mistakes with my language and my terminology every single day but i want to learn from that and make it better so we have to drive education to support people to go it's okay to make a mistake as long as the intent comes from the right place yeah and this dignity is is across the board and it's my personal dignity and how we each behave as individuals in each situation, be it the gym floor or the boardroom. You know, and just to touch on that, Rachel, because I think that's absolutely brilliant. I mean, the thing is, is that you are still sitting in a, in a, a place of dignity if your intent is in the right place. If you say something that's that's off color or out of place, but your intent is not there and you're willing to say, hey, I, I might have said that wrong. Could you correct me? Can you tell me, could you point me in the right direction? Uh, where, where did I miss? Yeah, now we're all sitting there all trying to learn and trying to benefit. Yeah. And that's and that's literally what dignity is all about. You're still, you, you, you're, you're coming from a place of conscious, a place of, of meaning, meaningfulness. Guys, if we, we, one thing I think about is, you know, the it, it's easy to get depressed about the situation across uh, the world in the, in these regards, but but uh, it, it really I think depends on the perspective on the progress that, that has been made. For example, in terms of equal rights for um, uh, people who happen to be homosexual, um, that's it's only a 30, 40 year uh, historical time span, right? Uh, in the late I know that in the late 1970s, homosexuality was still considered uh, a mental disease in, in, in Denmark and, and throughout uh, Europe and the Western world. And, and of course, in terms of um, racial equality, that's only has only been a, a political priority for, I mean, not, not even 100 years, right? It, it really only took uh, momentum after World War II in, in the US. And, um, but of course, one can look at that and, and become very depressed. Why is humanity so, um, you know, why are we so tribalist, right? Um, and, but we could also, of course, look at it and, and, and conclude that we can make progress. It can happen. But, but I think sometimes in the West, we have a tendency to be Western centric and, and look at our world and, and look at the, the, um, the, um, 
the, the issues that we have in this, this and many other regards and disregard the fact that when we compare to the rest of the world, slavery is still a thing in, in Northern, Northern Africa, we know. Um, in, in, in Asia, you know, gender equality is extremely, um, uh, you know, it, it's, there's a very problematic situation there. So I think, what do you think about this perspective? Why are we in the public debate? Why are we lacking or do you think we are lacking that perspective in terms of of the progress that has been made within the last perhaps 50 years. Um, and, you know, do we become too Western centric? Because the fact of the matter is, I would say that our situation in terms of gender equality, um, uh, equal rights for homosexual um, f- fellow citizens and equal right and racial equality, comparatively speaking, is much better in our part of the world than everywhere else. Is, is, is that a, what do you think about that assumption? I think in in a, if, in a nutshell, it's better than it was, um, and that's nice, but it's not good enough. And we have to keep it. I don't want to not smell the roses. Um, yes, there have been improvements, but like you said, in my lifetime, in my lifetime, it being gay was a men, it was an illness. You know, just last weekend, you could get married in Northern Ireland. Mm-hmm. Um, it's about equal equal treatment. So this is for me um, flying. It's not about it's about people yeah it's about people being treated with respect and i think we have to have the approach of yeah there's been change and that's nice but it's not good enough better never stops and we have to be better than yesterday and we have to be creating a better future particularly for the kids um for our future leaders in the industry and we have to learn from the history rather than kind of get caught up in the those little achievements Tony, do, um, do you think it's important to recognize the progress that, that has been made, for example, um, by, the, by the civil rights movement and so on? Or yeah, think- I, my thing is that I, I absolutely agree that, yeah, has, has the improvement uh, taken place? Absolutely. Absolutely. No doubt about it. But if I was able to draw a point to point graph and say this is where we were then and this is this is the trajectory that we should have taken but we've literally fallen off over yeah. here. That's the way that graph would look. From point to point, this is where we should be in 2020, 2021, and we're somewhere over here. So as a result of that, have we kept up with, with what we should have done with recognition for, for, for all? Um, equality, racial, everything, gender, everything. Should we, have, should we have kept up on that graph? Absolutely. Have we? No. But I think um, from my perspective, what what you said initially about uh, conscience, you know, dignity is directly, treating other people with dignity is is directly connected to your your conscience. That's where it needs to come from, right? You need to feel your fellow human being in order to immunize yourself against, uh, to the extent that that's possible against uh, uh, discriminating against other people. You need to feel feel your fellow human being and, and know that his or her rights are directly connected to your rights and your humanity is connected to that. And I would, um, as a final question, I would like to hear your thoughts on how, how, how is that possible? Um, how is it possible to promote, promote, um, pr- promote that approach that, you know, it, it seems a bit old school this day and age, to be honest. Sometimes when, when I study, study some of the enlightenment philosophers, the most universalist radical ones, the most idealistic ones, they're so optimistic about humanity and and humanity becoming one and 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 you know Thomas Paine from from the from the from the UK the British philosopher who argued in favor of of uh, gender equality and, and racial equality in the late 1700s um, and it's more than 200 years ago and we've come some way but not close to where he wanted us to what what he wanted us to achieve and uh, it's easy to get depressed but but then I, I Again, I think it's very important to recognize the progress and, and recognize the people who have uh, taken their destiny into their own hands and, and, and improved the situation. So with conscience, uh, Tony, um, it, to end on a Christmassy note, perhaps, and a, and a note of, of, of uh, yeah, uh, what do you think, in, how, how, how do you promote that? How do you promote that? I'm, I'm so glad that you related to the Christmas because that's actually what I was kind of thinking of. It's really good because at this, especially at this time of the year, you know, where everybody's very, very festive, it's, it's pretty much, you know, a, a, a given to be kind. And you know what? 
I think that's where the bridge should start. Make sure on a weekly, let, let, let's not start off too, you know, too, too much over, over the rainbow. Let's start off on a weekly thing of one act of kindness. Make sure you make a concerted effort of an act of kindness at least once a week. Then work that up to three times a week to at least daily. And make sure that while you're working in that act of kindness, get out of your, your normal surroundings. Make, a, again, a concerted effort to go to people that don't look like you, that don't necessarily act like you, and show that act of kindness, show that act of concern there. And that will start breaking down a lot of that tribalism, a lot of that, that everybody's got to look like me, everybody's got to act like me, they've got to be like me, they've got to love like me. Let's get away from that. And like you said, old school, I'm telling you, old school is where my life is at. Let's get kind again. Thanks so much, Tony. Rachel, final um, final comments? Yeah. yeah, you know, just what Tony said just resonates. Be kind. I think we want to be taken um, and respected as a mature sector and as professionals. And to do that, we just need to take action and make change immediately right now as soon as you unplug your headphones or hit stop on watching this go and speak to somebody um, that you've never spoken to before um, it's all about belonging people just want to belong um, and feel like they're part of something nobody wants to go into the party and be the person at the back of the room that everyone looks at and then looks back to their party so i think we need to slow down take a breath think about who's around us how we're acting how we're behaving and as Tony said in the beginning, it's there is so much talk about this. Um, and this is great that now we're walking the talk. So we start to act, we start to act now by being kind. Final question um, that I have to ask you guys. How, how do we make sure that we don't get into a tribal, tribalist situation, that we that we don't fight tribalism with tribalism? That uh, that, for example, because some um, white people in the past did terrible things to black black people, how do we make sure that? That we don't get sort of the sort of a circular situation where where we where black people then start to discriminate against white and so on and so forth because for me that would be an, a zero sum game right we would end up in the same situation certainly not the MLK vision and the same for you uh, Rachel with regards to to stray and straight and and homosexual how do we make sure that we that we don't uh, it doesn't become a tribal tribalist sort of group against group Tony what do you think. Uh, recognition. To me, the word that jumps out to me is recognition. Recognize, for example, the, how, how much of a, a powder keg just Black Lives Matter has become. It's become this just dynamite ignition for like, oh, if you wear a pin, if you wear a shirt, oh, are you just saying that only your life matters? Uh, the, for me, the best analogy that I ever, ever heard in this whole situation was, look, a house is on fire. Fire department's been called. Fire trucks pull up. They're running to save that house. But the neighbor comes out and goes, hey, what about my house? Firefighter says, but your house is not on fire. Right. Rachel, any final comments? On I think we, 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 you can't change everybody, um, but you can change with, start with changing of yourself and then everybody you come into contact with and act with integrity in everything that you do. Um, we've, we've got one shot at this and there's never been a better time with where we are in this world right now, where Europe active are right now in the thought process with the, you know, the, the charter, the manifesto, the pillars, and we have an obligation and we're all responsible to make the world a better place. Fact. We can get this right. We can get this right. Absolutely. Okay, thanks so much guys for joining us today and sharing your insight and expertise. Um, we'll definitely come back um, with uh, this conversation around uh, dignity, equality, tolerance, meritocracy and anti-discrimination and the work of our uh, DEI uh, advisory group early next year in a following uh, podcast. I just want to end by saying we have another great podcast coming up on the 21st of December, the fitness startups for 2021 with a couple of uh, digital startup startups in our sector doing amazing work to improve our sector in the area of digital and tech. 
during uh, COVID-19. So thanks so much, guys. Have a very Merry Christmas and a, and a Happy New Year. Thanks so much. Merry Christmas. Happy Thank New you. Year. Thank you very much. Be kind. Be kind.